What's going on, BFL fam? I'm Carlos, and today I have a very exciting guest today, Mr. Christoph Lodomiel. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Hi, Carlos. Thank you. I'm so Thank excited. You this is the man who created this beauty right here. You know that it's one of my favorite fragrances ever, Amber Absolute. And uh, yeah, I just can't believe I'm sitting here doing this interview <laughs> with him. I met him about a year ago, then we kept in touch, and we said we got to do something together. So here we are. And we're going to talk about what went into making this beautiful fragrance and about amber in general. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I was explaining, uh, maybe we should start with the story about uh, amber in general because people are very confused often. And it is confusing when you don't know the different stories. Amber, the only real thing about amber is this uh, fossilized pine resin that you can find, for instance, in Poland. Uh, it's very hard, hard like a rock. It is a rock mm -hmm. and it doesn't smell. And uh, uh, but it has a very nice ambery color, a little bit like this. So that gives some uh, an idea of a name for a fragrance that has naturally a ambery color as well. But when you tell a perfumer this fragrance is ambery, they often don't know. I don't know what it means. If you say, "Oh, it has nice amber," I'm like, "Okay, so what it is?" <laughs> First of all, some people think of amber grease. So that's the thing from the whale and has nothing to do with uh, what we call usually ambery notes. Mm -hmm. right? So amber grease, which is very uh, leathery, animalic, horsey. Then you have amber. Sometimes we talk about one ingredient, which is amber resin from a plant that grows mostly in Spain called labdanum or cistus. Okay. Uh, so maybe sometimes you hear cyst absolute. It sounds like a disease. Cistus <laughs> is awful name. <laughs> but that's the Latin name. And so uh, we call it also labdanum. It goes in the leathery family. See, you can smell. So that's exactly the one that you have in here. Wow. And one reason why this is very dark is because this is very dark. So if you go like this, and it's, you see, it's like this gooey, wow. gooey thing. Uh, maybe I should put on the on the white of the table. <laughs> yeah. Right so, <laughs> but so this grows wild in Spain. So every year they have to harvest that. Mm -hmm. It's a plant. It's also called uh, rock rose. It's very sticky and they extract that resin and they extract it in different ways. You see how dark that is? It, it actually looks like molasses. <laughs> yes, exactly. And it smells a little bit cinnamic. It has some little cinnamic note naturally in it, but it's also very leathery. And right? a little boozy at all? Yes, yes. So the boozy effect we'll see even more in the benzoin we're going to smell later, which I have here, you will see. Benzoin is a, a, a balsam from a tree. Resin. So sometimes when people say I have amber, it might be just that. Okay. And then sometimes uh, it can be also a very dry note that you find now in a lot of uh, fine fragrances on the market. Um, you have this uh, dry woody note. For me, it smells a little bit like also tar on okay. the street. Yeah. So that comes out of the the excess by Paco Rabanne, the one million. The, a lot of Armani fragrances have this note now. So that's some uh, molecules. Okay. And in the past 10, 15 years, the fragrance houses have worked a lot that chemistry around that note. So we put that in a dry amber family as well. So sometimes just because there's that, okay. people say it's ambery. And then finally, there is. Uh, this amber accord, which was done a lot around the 1900s, which, for instance, Coty in 1905, if I'm correct, came out with an amber, mm -hmm. the amber by Coty, that had a nice ambery color and was based on some a combination of ingredients, which was also found in the a famous base by Delaire, mm -hmm. the Ambre de Delaire, which had also that combination. Maybe you know the candle or the fragrance by Nigutal. Uh, the Ambre uh, by Neil Boutal, it's also a very nice amber. It has very nice combination. Mm -hmm. And what I did to put it in there, I have some of these ingredients I have in there, okay. but uh, and some I don't have, so that it's not as sweet, if you notice, as normal. And some are natural resins, and some are molecules. So this you cannot do without molecules. But just like Coty could not do certain things without molecules. So in those typical notes you have in that famous accord, you have that amber, that labdanum resin from Spain. And I have a lot. Which comes from a plant? Yes, it's like a crawling plant okay. with little white flower. We don't really care about the flower for this one. We just have the whole plant white. And then every year it grows again. Okay. Okay. So this is one of the few sustainable yet white plants that we harvest. Then you have 
So sometimes you have real vanilla extract. So you see these uh, vanilla uh, vanilla beans. Huh? So these are from Madagascar. Vanilla beans? Yeah. Vanilla pods. Vanilla pods. Voilà. So this is actually the only orchid that we extract in perfumery and we extract we extract the uh, the fruit of it, the okay. bean. And so in there you have the little seeds in fact. Uh, it's very complicated to cure vanilla, that's why it's very expensive. They say it has to go through 25 pairs of hands. Wow. The people drying them. Then when it rains, you know in the tropics it rains often, clack, they have to bring everything back inside. Then they bring, put it back in the sun and it's for two or three days. It has to stop before it starts fermenting, otherwise it stinks. So then you have to boil it. The boiling cannot be too much, otherwise it smells <laughs> of boiled. So you have to stop it right before that, and then you have to dry it again, and then, and then, and then. it's like a whole thing. And it's all by hand, there is no robot, no, no nothing to do that. So uh, you can have a, a, a vanilla extract, which is actually not so sweet. It smells really like that, the vanilla mm -hmm. extract. Huh? And there was a crisis lately in Madagascar about vanilla, that's why the prices went up. I just posted on Instagram about that. And it's true, it's a true story. There was a big hurricane and, and ruined a lot of plantations. And wow, vanilla. that's awful. Yeah, so uh, now it's going to stabilize again, hopefully, the vanilla uh, production. So you have that, yet that is not sweet enough to do the ambery effect. Mm -hmm. So already in the 1900s, uh, they did vanillin. In fact, the German guys, uh, the Harman and Reimer had a factory in Germany already in 1874, 1876 mm -hmm. to make vanillin. So vanillin, when you look at it, it's only the crystals wow. found in here. <laughs> if I would have known better, I would think we're doing drugs here or something. <laughs> you see? Wow. And so, so this <laughs> is a very old molecule done in the lab, otherwise it would be very expensive to extract it from this. You see? Let me ask a question. Yes. I heard that even um, synthetics are derived from naturals as well, or is that not true? Uh, no. Where did they... I hear that? I heard <laughs> it before, I promise. Yeah, no. So, what they mean probably, such, such as this one, vanillin is found naturally in nature. So mm -hmm. we would call that a nature identical molecule that you synthesize in the lab from other, from carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, mm -hmm. you make, actually there's no nitrogen in there, from carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, from other plants, from the air, from different things, you, like Legos, mm -hmm. the plant uses carbon, hydrogen, oxygen from the air and makes vanillin inside the plant. Mm -hmm. The engineers, they take carbon, hydrogen, oxygen from other things, and, but the same carbon, the same hydrogen, the same oxygen, and uh, can make vanillin another way, but in a way that you can make much, much more in a much cheaper way. Mm -hmm. We would not have enough vanilla pods on the planet to, to, uh, to make all the vanillin we, we use. Yes, yeah, I get it. And so, uh, and also your candle, your Tom Ford, which is already not cheap, but would be really not, uh, uh, you could not afford it. I mean, like you and anybody would be like, uh, it would be very rare as well. If so, real, yeah, if we would have vanillin only from that, got it. And so, um, and we do need vanillin as uh, in its pure form, like this. We do need that to make the sweetness and the effect, the sexiness we need. Just this is not enough to do those effects, yeah. What you see, see, guys. Sorry, I'm the old garlands that we know very well, they uh -huh. use vanillin, uh, Shalimar, Mitsuko, you need that. You cannot do Shalimar, Mitsuko just with this. So, Grelinade has oh, vanillin yes, in it. Yes, okay. vanillin, and even one that you don't even find in nature called ethyl vanillin. So, mm -hmm. it's a pure synthetic, you don't find it in nature, but it gives an extra sweetness, okay. even a chocolatey sweetness that you have in Shalimar. So, then another, uh, another way of extracting this resin is called ambreine. So, it's an extract of the extract, if you wish. And you cook it in a certain way, and it's even sharper. It's found in a lot of... So, you see here, you have the leather note coming out even more. And the freshness, you see, it's almost a bit acidic. Ambreine, this one yeah, is. That's, huh? that's nice. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Even on its own, before even being mixed. With it was else. used also a lot in the 60s, 70s, when they were doing like the Dracar Noir of this world, the Polo Green has some Ambraine. 
so it's a, a special cut of this labdanum here, which is, I, I find softer, not so acidic. That's why I base this fragrance on that. Mm -hmm. It has a lot, more than 10% in this fragrance, which is also rare because so much resin, it's a nightmare for the factory. It's, uh, this is quite dark. Uh, if you spray that on your white blouse. Uh, yeah, it'll stain. Uh, yes, because of this. So uh, we have that. Then I want to mention an ingredient, since you were mentioning boozy, which is used a lot in number, but not in this one. Okay. It's benzoin. Maybe you've heard of benzoin. Yes, I have. So benzoin, you bleed the tree in a sustainable way mm -hmm. in Southeast Asia. You don't kill the tree at all. You just bleed it like a maple tree. Okay. You bleed the tree and it gave some tears and they're called tears. Like Why this. Like tears? So, no, that's benzoin. They ah. look like that. Okay. Uh, it was just to show the shape. Gotcha. So, uh, you cut me on the frankincense, so that's going to come. That's going to come. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but so here, think rum. You know dark rum from mm -hmm. the Caribbean? So I don't know why it has those notes, totally naturally. It's crazy, no? Yeah, that's huh? definitely, it's I'm cute. in the mood for... Uh, it's fabulous. I got a Diet Coke on the side here. <laughs> gotta be good with it. <laughs> No, so same. So this is another. The, so this is in the balsam family. Huh? This one was purified, so it's less gooey. And uh, often you find benzoin a lot in amber, ambers mm -hmm. that are always or amber of course. Yes, exactly. It's a nice okay. note. And the, uh, labdanum. As soon as you put a little bit, it gives a labdanum-y feeling an ambery feeling or uh, a resin a resin feeling benzoin no benzoin if you put a little bit it gives a sexiness to a floral mm -hmm. so uh, uh, it's more discreet it can give some body uh, so it's an interesting note that is used a lot by perfumers i do see that note often in the uh, no pyramids of certain perfumes yeah well, and I'm i see labdanum a lot but i always associate it with resinous and incensey fragrances yes. which that we definitely have here and yes um, yes and um, you can use a little bit it will give sexiness but right away it gives a little darkness so it gives a little perfumey feeling mm -hmm. whereas benzoin is more discreet okay right? voilà. so now what i have i don't have benz benzoin benzoin in this one i have a frankincense okay and so frankincense is also a tree that you bleed in the desert of Oman, or there's another quality in the desert of Somalia, uh, Ethiopia, Somalia, Eritrea, mm -hmm. where also myrrh grows. But, so this one comes from Oman, and I just wanted to show a few, uh, a few frankincense tears to uh, people, you see, they look like that. This one is actually- Actually, you know what, the table, I should, yeah. I should probably yeah. put my hand up front here. You see, there voila. You are. This oh, yeah. one actually is very fresh. I keep it in the freezer and it has these green shades. When it's very fresh and young, it's still green like that. Mm -hmm. And it, when you burn it, it, it almost smells like a shower jet, naturally. It's quite wow. amazing. So I keep it in the freezer. Sometimes in some fragrances where it has um, a frankincense note, I yes. get a soapy kind of smell. Yes. So I'm not off. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it has some some smell in common, and then but frankincense is is quite discreet in the fragrance. So we boost it with a note that we use also in soap that is like a little bit of salt that brings out the frankincense, and uh, it's actually the note that you find also in Chanel Number no. Five. If you notice, Chanel Number no. Five has a soapy feeling on top. You cannot avoid mm -hmm. it once you know. And that note, if you use it with resins will bring in a candle a frankincense effect. Wow. So it's, so it's like salt that you can use in different ways. Wow. That little molecule we have in the lab. Yeah. This is all so absolutely you see the amazing nose, to me. Yeah, <laughs> voila. The nose makes sense. If you, I always tell people, if you smell something, you're not dreaming. Yeah? It's there. Now, finding the explanation is more complicated because sometimes things smell differently but are totally unrelated, but yet they have uh, voila. So perfumers will like to play with this. And then um, I have some uh, sandalwood notes in here, some very prestigious notes, but not natural because the natural won't give a freshness. Natural sandalwood would disappear often behind so much resin of lamanum, okay. uh, but also um, 
Here, I had enough sexiness. I wanted to give the freshness. And sandalwood molecules, you will see, have a freshness that is quite unique. So this one, uh, I'll just brought two. Huh? One is Bagdanol. So they're very well known. Bagdanol has been known for a long time. Voila, you can smell. You will see. It's quite fresh. And it gives a sexiness. It gives a... And it's subtle. A, yeah, a je ne sais quoi. Voilà. These are things you can wrap things around. Mm -hmm. And then um, Sanginol is a similar molecule, more recent, and has more freshness. You will see. It makes a, almost a little salty feeling, but elegant. Huh? You will see. Yeah. You see how it, it comes up? It's hard to describe till you smell those notes. Uh, by themselves, but um, uh, this you don't have that freshness in natural sandalwood. In natural sandalwood, however, you will have a creaminess, a milkiness that's Which very is unique. It's fabulous. Mm -hmm. right? So it was not the story here. And then with the, all the vanilla I had, I didn't want to get into the milky notes, but uh, that's very unique to natural sandalwood. So it's a, a nice way to recognize it when you go to a, a souk, for instance, okay. and you buy, they tell you it's natural sandalwood, smell it, and it should not smell of patchouli because sometimes they, they put a bit of patchouli to make it stronger, stronger. or more mystical. Look yeah. at the nice sandalwood I have. Yeah, it's very, hey, there's full of patchouli here. So if you like it, that's fine. I'm not getting over on this <laughs> nose here. <laughs> No, and then you have to have that beautiful milkiness of natural sandalwood. This is, this is really, really nice. So this definitely was a commercial hit for you. Uh -huh. You have had a couple of commercial successes. You were involved with Ralph Lauren Polo Blue, mm -hmm. with uh, Carlos Carlos Benayim, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and also you're the nose behind Fierce for Amber Crombie and Fitch, mm -hmm. which is the smell that they used to have coming out of all the stores. Yes, 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 yes. yes. So millions upon millions of people have smelled your creation. Yeah, so here, uh, to explain, first we had the fragrance coming on the market as a skin fragrance. And uh, actually, to tell the truth, it, the, the story was like that. Uh, the brief came to IFF uh, for uh, Abercrombie, uh, and it was at the time a very uh, posh, or uh, I knew them from going to university in Boston, you know, it was a little bit British style, okay. or. Uh, East Coast preppy mm -hmm. style. I remember they had all the, the shaving stuff. It was a very different mood. And when they came, and they are, I was like, "Oh, that's really a brand." I well, I know them from my college years, but it's you know, it's a. And then they uh, they, they revamped the whole marketing. They selected the friends in a very different way. And then when we had that brief, in fact, Carlos gave me a formula that he had done for another project, but didn't go anywhere. And uh, <clears throat> he said, why don't you play a little bit with this? So in fact, it started with a formula from Carlos that was a little bit more uh, classical, I would say. And I revamped it my way and I did this, removed that, cleaned it up and everything. And then uh, <clears throat> I talked with, about it with uh, Bruno. Bruno was also, Bruno Jovanovic was also part Bruno, of Bruno, I know exactly. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so we, and we, uh, we, we did a, what we call in perfumery a base. So you put in the base the ingredients that you lack and the ingredients that you really want to have. And then usually you do some tweaks. And <coughs> the, the evaluator at the time, Tamara, I'll name her because she, she submitted two or three tweaks that we did, but also the base. And I said, Tamara, you didn't, you didn't show the base. <laughs> yeah, that was the base. They liked the base. I was like, what? They liked actually the real structure, the skeletal, okay. the hardcore thing. Mm -hmm. And then it went on, it went on, it went on. And uh, one day they said, oh, we need a test crystal with your fragrance and uh, against another fragrance they had in the run. And the, the, uh, the way they selected them was very unusual. To this day, mm -hmm. I wish they would select more fragrances that way. And I'm going to say, they went to the, uh, at the exit of the clubs in New York City at 3 a.m. Okay. in the morning. Wow. Uh, no, it's a true story, they explained to me. Our street sense idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how they selected it. <laughs> and so they had the two contenders. They asked guys and girls, although it was a friends for guys, but mm -hmm. they asked guys and girls. And they said, with which fragrance would you like to get laid? That okay. was the real story. <laughs> and so they said, oh, that one won, won, the fierce. And so, uh, this because it's quite can't make this stuff up. It's quite a story, and I think some brands should be inspired as to how they selected the fragrance. 
And it started small because the brand was not as famous before, and with, you know, with the torso that everybody knows. And uh, <coughs> I had several girl friends, I mean girls that are friends, tell me, Christophe, I'm sick of sleeping guys that smell of Blue Daniel. Each time I have to think of you when I'm sleeping with these guys. <laughs> but no, it is a phenomenon, I have to say. And so, um, uh, and then it grew, and then when they started to play them in the stores, then that gave also a big, big hit. And in fact, stores should be much more inspired by this. They don't have to play that strong, uh, mm -hmm. but I wish stores would have their s the identity signature scent like yeah. that. Because when you go to a store, it, it should smell like something. Yeah, know? yeah, like hotels do it often yeah, in, in more Europe. Hotels. Um, in Asia, big time. Also, I create a lot for a lot for hotels in Asia, and uh, but now I think even in the U.S., hotels more and more. Uh, if you go to the Pierre Hotel, mm -hmm. I, I did the scent. Uh, it's part of the luxury, but part of the atmosphere. For sure, for and sure. And if you don't do olfactory design in a hotel or in a store, go in there, and you will see it's it smells awful most of the time, and it doesn't fit with the brand. <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. It, so I hope people. Two thousand two. This came out. 2002, I said, I didn't remember. And it's still around, it's still yeah, in, yeah, in yeah, yeah. release. Yeah, boy, it was not In circulation, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, big time. I think it is still, or it was many, 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 many years, still recently the number one on the US market. Wow, so that's it's, amazing. It's, it's bigger than Aqua Di Gio. So it's quite, it's quite something. No, it's cool. Well, this yeah. was completely, completely amazing. Like, oh, thank, thank you, you so thank much. Thank you for coming here. We're going to shoot some other stuff soon. Yeah. But um, I hope you had a great time listening to this gentleman speak. i totally amazed and I had the best time. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Thank you. Thanks so much for thanks, your work. Uh, thank you, thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye.